Yeah, there's not going to be any need to raise my voice here, I hope. <laughs> we, we don't have uh, Danny here. Usually I raise my voice with him. Anyway, welcome to the, what show is this? That's right, this is uh, the Mayo's Movie Talk Show, where we talk about movies and TV shows and this and that and the other thing. Uh, can take some of your questions. Uh, hopefully yeah. they'll be a little different than usual, but it's hard when you do a show every every week, you know? Uh, and you know, talk about uh, in Tom's case, things he's watched. I haven't. I only watched a couple, a uh, few TV episodes. That's it. Mm-hmm. And we'll see. So, hello, people who are here. You know who you are. I don't have the energy. Yeah, I got it. I got it. A cold or something. I'll say. I got a cold or something. So I'll, I'm gonna occasionally. You may see me go off screen to cough and, and stuff. So, all right. Everyone has a choice. Hello, Jim. Hello. You're right you about see, this. Uh, you can see Alfalfa trying to sing it really bad. You know, everyone is. <laughs> yeah, I could see him doing that. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everybody. Yes, indeed. Hey. How you guys doing? What's on your mind, pals? I hope uh, I hope you guys brought some questions. Yeah, I hope so. Or because some in the meantime... statements or comments or whatever. We got to like find like things to talk about in the meantime. So we all, I always go to Tom right away. Because Tom usually either he got stuff in the mail, bought yeah. stuff, or watched stuff. So, Tom, start us off. Well, you know how I get things, right? I spend money, right? <laughs> yeah. This is a different money stream. And I get them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Sorry about that. Yes, um, right. So, listen, uh, last week I saw a movie called One Life uh, with Anthony Hopkins and... Um, you know, I had kind of known this this the story. This play, I think, it was uh, Nicholas Winston. I think was the, the was the name character. It was based on a true story, and uh, he uh, was responsible for saving 669 children's lives uh, right before World War II started. Um, they were in Prague, in Czechoslovakia, Czechoslovakia, Czechoslovakia. <laughs> um, Mamonia. Um, yeah, there you go. And then, hey, James, and. Um, I had seen footage of a TV show that he was a part of in the 80s and to where um, they had found one of the, the children that, you know, obviously she was an adult now and um, he was she was sitting next to him and, and he had no idea. So uh, and then the following week they had found even more. So they did another show and then there were like dozens of people that he ended up saving that was on the TV show. And every time I watch it, I tear up. So I'm sobbing throughout the whole movie because I know how it's going to end. Uh, you know, so but they did a great job of of presenting uh, the story, and 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 they they really uh, were able to be successful for me, anyways, with the emotional aspect of it, with how how it ends, and he and him getting to um, you know meet all these children eventually, because he he didn't want any credit for it eventually, you know, he didn't want anybody to know, and obviously there was other people that helped as well. So, but the movie's called One Life, starring Anthony Hopkins, and I I, I really enjoyed the hell out of it. So. Uh, that's the one I saw in the theater. Now, I did pick up a couple uh, Blu-rays, and uh, we all know that you know, I've talked about Myrna Loy quite a bit, so I picked up Mr. Blanding's Build a Dream, his Dream Oh, Life. I saw that. Yeah, with Cary Grant as well, and I used to have this on DVD, um, so I was happy to upgrade to uh, Blu-ray on this one. So Melvin Douglas, Cary Grant, Myrna Loy, um, there you go. So this was a fun little film. Um, the one movie I, I picked up as well and watched earlier today, and that's the, the Social Network from 2010. Uh, this is pretty much, uh, you know, the story of Facebook uh, right here, Mark Zuckerberg. And, uh, and you know, and the, the, all the, uh, the lawsuits that he was going through and then him personally, him putting together Facebook and everything, directed by David Fincher. I really, really like this movie. Um, and if you haven't checked it out, and if you like David Fincher, you should watch this one. And then uh, lastly, a story about a horse, but it was also a story about America as well. Uh, oh. That's called Sea Biscuit. Yeah. Oh, what? my uh, my girlfriend loves that movie. I remember seeing it. I got to look at my notes oh, yeah. to see what I did not like yeah. about it. <laughs> okay, well, I would love to hear, but Toby Maguire, Jeff Bridges, Chris Cooper, great cast. Um, again, another emotional no an emotional film when you you know when you know when the story takes place and um and you know, and the car is around. A car is, uh, has arrived, and and um, you know, the Great Depression is going on. But what's it? What what is the 
the one thing that brought the country together. It, it was a horse, uh, you know, so uh, during that Great Depression. So a really good story, really good film, in my opinion. Uh, so check out uh, Sea Biscuit. All right. And, did and you... now those were the films that I've picked up uh, over the last week. There's nothing else to waste time That's with. That's it. Because I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm looking up here, um, trying to find. I'm mean, going to if I could possibly find my Sea Biscuit review to see what yeah. I didn't care for. I remember not liking it, but I can't remember why. Really? Oh, uh, well, you got to see. I know it's a popular movie and all that. Yeah. What does this mean? You, you ever get tired of being a fan? I think he's referring to um, another another a big YouTube uh, YouTuber uh, Elliot. He he's got a channel called Boutique uh, Blu-rays. I forgot the name of the YouTube channel, but he had just done a video about being, you know, just like being burnt out on collecting. So I'm wondering if, if that's um, if he's referring to that, and um, you know, feeling like you need to you know get the latest 4K or Blu-ray, keeping up with the Joneses and and all of these boutique labels you know they they do cost a pretty penny right most of them are like can be 39.99 yeah. to you know to 50 bucks you know so uh and this guy's got a massive library of films um so i mean i can understand where he's coming from however i have never really felt burnt out about collecting films uh maybe one day but uh but it hasn't uh hasn't hit me yet so that's i'm not i'm not there there yet how am i gonna find this uh, but where did you write it? Where where did you? Well, write so, well I don't want anybody looking at it, but uh, <laughs> mm. but uh, it's on some online somewhere. But the thing okay. is, you know, it used to be easier way to find these things. Mm. Uh, you know, now you got to do like I don't know, prolific writers or something. You got to like file them under prolific writers. It's like you used to be able to just get the titles. Um, well, that's, maybe... one, that's that's a, maybe a cool thing you could do in the future when you find these notes. Maybe just one day, you know, you know, read off one of your notes for for a couple films or just one film on your, you know, on. The... Yeah, that's not a bad idea. And I, I did that for one of the videos. I did a, on a silent film called The Penalty. I did one, okay. but I did that as a video. You know, I was able to. Uh, I don't know if I put my name in there. Uh, I was able to do that to kind of make a video. I don't know if that's cheating or not. It's not. I mean, I watched it mm -hmm. maybe some time ago, you know. Mm -hmm. But I can't. You're not going to be able to find this. Yeah. The only thing I can do is, and you know, it's like, it used to be a lot easier. You just put up the name of the of the okay. person, and then all the movies come up. And titles only, alphabetically. Now, when you do okay. it, you know, it comes up with the whole text. So you gotta look. If you do like a thousand reviews, you gotta go through all the texts to, to find it. This is S, so <laughs> I don't know if you could find anything. I'm sorry, folks. I don't. Want, this is terrible. But I'm dying to talk about this. See what I thought of it, but uh, then you go. How many reviews are there on here? It's gonna be a lot, I'm sure, on this movie. Uh, I can't find anything. Oh, there it is. User reviews, 492. <laughs> oh, wow. Search by, filter by, sort by, I usually do <laughs> prolific viewer, meaning that has a lot of <clears throat> people. So anyway, if you could take any of the questions, that's fine with me. There's some, sure. there's some for you. Okay. Uh, the first one is thoughts on scanners. I watched it today. Pretty good special effects for the time. Uh, a little slow going. Yeah, uh, David Cronenberg, uh, Scanners. I mean, that was right around the time where he did uh, The Brood um, and, you know, another stuff from, from the early 80s. I, I, I enjoy it. Michael Ironside is pretty good in there. Um, I'll tell you, yeah, the, the effects, when you, when you do see the head explode, uh, well, I guess I guess uh, that might be a spoiler. But, uh, um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty good. I, I enjoy it for an early early Cronenberg. Uh, I am enjoying some of the stuff that Cronenberg has done over the last 20 years. Um, I don't know if you guys think so as well, but but Cronenberg was a visionary back in the late 70s, yeah. early 80s, in my opinion. Um, uh, Pops Arise, Tom, have you seen the movie Blackboard Jungle? So, what do you think of it? I have. Um, <laughs> yeah, 
so have I. I mean, Glenn Ford, uh, early performance from Sidney Poitier. It, it's really funny when... Jamie Farr is in there. Yeah. It's really funny when, when, when you see a movie like that, okay, and the, the actor like Sidney Poitier becomes a big star, and then he does something that kind of resembles that, because then he did with Serve to Love, and the, but this time he was was um, the teacher. So I, I think the Sir with Love is almost kind of like a, um, a remake in a way, uh, or the same kind of idea. Um, but, um, but yeah, I, I, so I kind of prefer uh, to Sir with Love over Blackboard Jungle, but uh, Blackboard Jungle is not bad. I could, I'm, I've never been the biggest Glenn Ford fan. Um, yeah, but, uh, he doesn't stand out to me you know, too much. Yeah, but, um, but he's got some good moments. I mean, 310 to Yuma, the, the original. Uh, I think he, he, he does very well in that. Uh, there's some other stuff, too. But in, for, throughout his career, I've never been the biggest fan of of his. Um, I just saw The Unknown, 1927, with Mark yeah. Joan Crawford. Yeah. Um, so that was the one that was in the uh, in the box set, the Criterion box set, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Along with Freaks and uh, The Mystique. Um, so, yeah, and I, I enjoyed The Unknown as well. Uh, Joan Crawford was kind of a hottie back. Very yeah, she she nice. didn't really, and she didn't look like the later Joan Crawford too much. No, no, kind of a kind of exotic looking in a way, or at least yeah. you know, the makeup did a good job of making her look exotic in the in the film. I remember there so being a lot of yeah. innova- innovative, uh, yeah. innovative yeah. shots, camera work. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yep, I I agree with with you there. Um, so yeah, the unknown I I really did enjoy. So I'm glad you watched that. Glad you watched it. Um, Silver Phantom, like if you're a fan of a certain film for decades and then you feel you just watched the film out of obligation, especially when you're known to love it. Okay, that's what you mean by by getting burnt out or whatever, tired of. Um, I, I mean, I guess that's happened on occasion a couple times. Um, a film that you love and then you watch it and you, you've, you've, you've watched it. Multiple, multiple times. I, I, I guess it just depends if you have any kind of like nostalgia with the with the film. Um, anyways, I, 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 I guess I would say yeah. I, I have felt at times there was just um, you know, I'm watching it just because of you know, I own it and I love it. Um, maybe you just don't put enough time in between viewings of the of the same film. Yeah, uh, yeah, maybe. But I, I never get I never get burnt out of collecting of films. I guess that's why you you keep discovering new things, right? Um, you keep well, dis- you yeah. going keep on going into different genres. I mean, if you're gonna watch the same films over and over again, then yeah, that's what, you know same thing you know with be for music too. I mean, you you know once you've heard something over and over again, you you want to see if there's other things out there that will pique your interest. And and uh, there's there's plenty of uh, films out there. For me, anyways, that have definitely piqued my interest. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm a huge Woody Allen fan. Huge Woody Allen fan. Um, I mean, there's some lesser Woody Allen films out there that aren't as good as what you call the the uh, you know the you know top tier of, of Woody Allen films. But um, but in general, over his long career, I would say that he is probably you know what you would call a first ballot Hall of Famer. Well, I, I agree with you. Uh, not that I was asked, Oliver, but I but I do like Woody Allen stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I do. Um, but this thing about the new Allen, what the heck is new? What is? Yeah, oh, Alien. I thought you said Allen. Alien. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come new on. Alien. Alien Romulus, it's called. And I tell you what, I watched the tra- I watched this teaser teaser trailer earlier today, and it really harkens back to the original. A lot of tension, uh, in mm. there. A lot of. <laughs> A lot of uh, violence. It appears like there's going to be a lot of violence and blood uh, in this one. Uh, a lot of screams and, and horror. So I, you know, I, I'll mm. tell you, um, I was a fan of Prometheus. I didn't see the one that was after that, but I am looking forward to watching this new Alien uh, Romulus film, which well, I think comes out in August. So, I get yes, them. I get them mixed that. up. I. I mean, I. I after, yeah. after after four, which I thought I hated four. You, you yeah. Know, you know. I thought I have, there was some good bits mi- in mixed there. Mixed up. Yeah. I thought there was some good bits in there, but uh, all in all, it it was not a good. 
Not well, I had to think I can't stand when it turned into co too comical, and I thought that was—I remember it be very comical, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. you know. But uh, yeah. uh, in the other ones, I just lost track a lot. I didn't see Alien vs. Predator, and then there was some other one I saw that didn't make any sense to me because I missed yeah. a bunch of them with a bunch of eggs. And, I mean, they all have eggs, yeah. I guess. But I have—I have, I I have, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. But I don't know. It's hard when we when we're both on, but I don't—I don't have much else to say about. Yeah, I have no interest when two franchises are or, you know, go at each other, like the Godzilla versus Kong. I have no interest in that. Freddy versus Jason, I have no interest in I that. I do. Well, yeah, you do. Frankenstein beats the Wolfman. Yeah, Woo! Wolfman. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but, yeah, I'll tell you what. I, I, I watched, like I said, I watched that Aliens, uh, or that Alien uh, Romulus teaser trailer today, and I'll tell you what, it, it piqued my interest. Oh, uh, for sure. And they yeah. try not to judge uh, by a trailer, but sometimes it's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, of course I've seen Old Brother Where Out There. Oh, of course, I have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a huge Coen Brothers fan, and uh, um, I, I will this. watch. I've, I've seen, I think, 99% of the films that they've, uh, that they've uh, released. Um... I enjoy Glenn Ford as Jonathan Kent and Superman. Yeah, I, I think that's one of the films that I don't mind him in. Um, uh, in Jonathan Brother Kent. Rath, that was great. Yeah, yes. That's about um, what he's good uh, for, Glenn Ford, playing like Courtship of Eddie's Father or playing, uh, you know, uh, that in Courtship of Eddie's Father or Jonathan Kent. <laughs> <laughs> he's like a regular dad, um, like, you know. Right. I, I got to find uh, this. Tom and Joe, what's your favorite Woody Allen film? That's uh, a hard I mean, for I, me. I, yeah, I mean, I know we've, we've, we've mentioned that before. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's, like, a one that just stands out. I mean, well, maybe. I like Crimes and Misdemeanors. Uh, yeah. I, I like, uh, I believe, Husbands and Wives. I actually like them. Yeah. These are, later, like, later ones. Uh, um... Uh, um, I'm trying to think of the early ones. Which one do I like? Out of the, the best out of the early ones. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like stuff like Small Time Crooks. I, I like like what I like like in the '90s and 2000s and stuff like that. Believe it or not, I can't believe yeah, I, I can't find this. Yeah, I think that's when he wasn't really at his best. Was that early 2000s bit? But um, but yeah, I mean, listen, you can't go. For my opinion, I love Zelig. I love, you know, obviously Annie Hall, Bananas, Sleepers, um, those early ones. Uh, everything you want to know about sex, <laughs> I still get a kick yeah, out Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, you, know, you know. Um, Tony Reynolds in that one, right? He's the, yeah. The, uh, the Burt, he's Burt, got, Burt Reynolds bit. He's got us the segment. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And Gene Wilder is very good in his segment yeah. with the sheep. Yeah, that's right. That's hilarious. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I like also Broadway Danny Rose. That's another yeah, one I like. Yeah, Broadway Danny Rose, absolutely. Was that the first one he did with Mia Farrow? Or was it Zelly? Oh, I found I my review. Was... Oh. Boy, that so took a long time. So this is your time. review about uh, Seabiscuit. <laughs> Seabiscuit. Let me, finally, here's what I did. I gave it two out of four stars. Wow, I even gave the eight man two and a half. Wow. Anyway, and, and or a five out of ten. So I wrote down... Mm -hmm. I did this in 2013, so this is an old review, and it's it's a little. Okay, let's see what I wrote. An overrated and overlong compilation of fluff about people following their dreams and coming out on top during the despairing days of the depression. The non-actor Toby Maguire is ineffective in making us feel anything for his lead character named Red, who is forsaken by his parents and tries to make it in the world by becoming a jockey. Red becomes fond of a lazy and temperamental horse called Seabiscuit and then works to tame him and turn him into a winning racing stallion. I can't speak like this, but I, when I write, I can come up with these things. Jeff Bridges fares a little better as a salesman who goes from bicycles to cars to placing stock in Seabiscuit. His second wife is played by Elizabeth Banks, who takes the prize of being the actor who can't convince me she isn't actually from the 21st century. There always seems to be at least one in these things. Uh, the, I don't remember any of this, but then I said, Chris Cooper plays the always sunken trainer 
whose tired and downtrodden persona grates on me after a while. For such an emotional subject, I found that I was not interested in any of these characters. I placed that flaw at the feet of the actors and director Gary Ross. Oh, boy, there's a little bit more. Then it says, the first 45 minutes or more are haphazardly shot and edited, so it's difficult to keep up with what's transpiring as many people and situations are flashed about at frantic pace to establish some kind of setup. I was just hoping a moment would come where we'd settle down and linger with the characters, or at least have one protracted sequence where we could relax and take it in. The sappiness of the story is pounded into our heads through a climactic feel-good score by Randy Newman, inappropriately placed just about everywhere instead of saved for the climax. Wow. I can't you believe I wrote two different that. films, my friend. <laughs> well, that's what most people feel when they disagree, that's for sure. And my girlfriend loves it. She owns it. That's what, you know. You, uh, you have no idea what that movie is about. That's movie for about sure. Not giving up, not giving up, not giving up on America. I mean, you have no idea what that movie is. I'm about. sorry. I disagree yeah. with you. As I was going through, <laughs> as I was going through, there were a lot of people. They were saying horse manure from Hollywood, right. blah, blah, blah. I mean, yeah. we're in the minority, but I'm not the only one that didn't. That, that didn't like it. Yeah. Oh, I, I forgot know. about Hannah and his sisters. I like that too. Yeah. But I get. These were uh, a pretty good period for, for Woody Allen as well. Uh, I, by the way, I should say, you know, very rarely do I go but for directors. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I still believe it's a joint effort. Director, actors, uh, you know, script, story, um, you know, uh, music, editor. I mean, sometimes when somebody does it all, you know themselves then i think that's all his work you know you know they always say right they give the director um yeah. martin scorsese's mean streets uh, so and so's movie but you have uh, your mount rushmore well, i'll give I you mean, mine well i think yeah i think william wyler needs to be there that's mine john ford. <laughs> don't take my ideas john ford i think john ford needs to be there uh spielberg definitely needs to be there and um that fourth one I think you can, I mean, I don't know about Billy Wilder, but um, uh, that fourth one is tough. But the three for sure, I think William Wyler, uh, uh, John Ford, and Steven Spielberg. Well, sure. I put William William Wyler first because, of you know, Ben-Hur, I, I think, is the greatest movie ever made. Not that I've seen, the ones I've seen, I've not seen every movie ever made. But maybe Orson Welles. I said I put on there maybe, but he's you know only did a two or three that I you know like maybe I put maybe I put Hitchcock on there. I don't know if his stuff holds Hitchcock. up as well, but uh, that's Hitchcock three. I got possibility. <laughs> I yeah. got three also. Uh, I you know and I was gonna say well George Roy Hill. I just like I like George Roy Hill. He's done some movies that I really thought were good, but. Yeah. Uh, the, I don't know if he'd be one of the greatest. And then I'm thinking, oh, geez, now I'm drawing a blank. I just had it, too. Uh, geez, I just had it. I hate that. Lost it. I, to be honest, I mean, I've seen bits and pieces of natural, uh, you know, National Velvet. And I, I mean, that's a you know, young Elizabeth Taylor is in that one, I think, right? That's the one we're thinking of. Yeah. Um, no interest there. I would watch, I would say Black Stallion first, uh, might be my second or another top five favorite, you know, horse movie. Um, Constructing Harry. Um, I would, I would put that under second tier. Myself. I don't remember loving that one. It doesn't, it doesn't stay in my mind. So I'm thinking maybe I didn't love it. Again, I probably got it in there. In, you know, if I look I mean, it up. I think, yeah. I mean, that was him doing his Igmar Bergman. Uh, kind of like wild, um, um, wild was it wild strawberries? I think he was influenced by for that one. I do, I, I do. I think my dinner with Andre is is kind of uh, fascinating in a way. I'll let you know when I see it. Yeah. I may never. I'm never going to see it at this point. Only the early Woody Allen is great. Oh, I don't agree with that. It, that, that it became an orgy of brutal yeah. realism. <laughs> nah, I don't know about that. But. You know, and I did like uh, Match Point. The first time I saw Match Point, yeah. I liked it. Then I saw it. I recommended it to my girlfriend. The second time, I didn't get as blown away by it. That happens from time to time. Yeah. The, 
the trio he did with Scarlett Johansson, that Scoop and Victoria, Vic, um, uh, Scoop. Veronica, Barcelona. Um, uh, I like that one a lot as well. Uh... Blue, blue. What was it? Blue. Uh, the one which. Uh, oh, uh, blue. Uh, uh, Blanchett. Yeah, with. You know what I'm talking about, right? No, I thought you were talking. Blanchett. Damn it. But I was I was thinking more of Wild Man Blues is what I was thinking of. Oh no! Which is no. a documentary One, about yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. The film, the Blue Jasmine. Thank you, Jeff, at the bottom. Yeah, Blue Jasmine, where Kate uh, Blan or Kate Blanchett won uh, Best Actress for that one. Fantastic film. I I have no, no interest in uh, Ghostbusters. No. Uh, Midnight in Paris. My my girlfriend loved that movie. That's a kind of romantic movie and everything. And. Uh, yeah, you know, I want Woody Allen in the movies. I mean, I just said I like Matchpoint. He's not in the movie. I mean, um, I like him in the movies. I like, you know, I like him to be in it um, when he's not. Eh, yeah, you know. I'm not the biggest fan when he's got another actor kind of playing the Woody Allen. Bit. Yeah, the Woody Allen like, bit. You know, you know yeah, uh, uh, Larry David did it, and Kenneth Branagh. And uh, say anything. There's that movie. Yeah. Say, I think it's say anything. Yeah. It's another so, one. Yeah. Yeah, John Huston, that's a good good uh, director choice. Good, but I mean, I don't know if he was, he's like an all-time great, though. Well, I don't know about I feel about the mill anymore. I don't know. I don't know about that. I mean, I always go by the... I mean, I've seen a few of his, not just that, but when I watch like something like the biblical movies, when I watch the Ten Commandments, when I watch Samson and Delilah or something like that, to me, they're so corny. They just seem corny now, almost like he was trying to make it hokey or something. Um, I don't know uh, where I, you know, like Ben Hur better. You know? So I do like Manhattan Murder Mystery, but I wouldn't call it, you know, one of his best works. But I like, I like seeing things offbeat like that. You know, everybody will say, "Oh, watch any any hall." You know, watch uh, any hall is good to me, though. It's not. He seems like he's been doing that kind of stuff. Like that's not a brand new thing to me at the time. Yeah. And I love that movie that he did not direct that he's in. One of my favorite is Playing Against Sam, which he's not. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, he didn't direct it, right? But but um, I, I love that movie. That's one of my favorite Woody Allen movies that he, <laughs> you know, that he's in. And I saw, what's the serious one? I was so surprised it wasn't bad. The Front? There's a movie called mm -hmm. The Front where he's, it's yeah. a serious, I think it's more yeah. serious. Yeah, Back Bick and Bur Beer just uh, mentioned that there. Oh. Coming up. There it is. There it is. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, cool. All right, Charles. Yeah, the Tatum O'Neill, Anthony Hopkins. I'll, I will, uh, I will check that one out. I don't think he plays in his movies anymore. I can't remember the last um, one that he played in. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, he was in that one that we just talked about, Midnight in Paris. Was it? I think he was in he that. He was. One. I have to go back and look. I'm, I'm uh, yeah, thinking, I, I don't even think he had a cam cameo in that one, but you can check yeah, it out. I yeah. might be wrong. Yeah, I mean, could be wrong, but, but um, I don't like, like you said, he's basically doing the, the Annie Hall thing again. He's repeat. He's not repeating himself. At, you know, the two love, and he's like in the Woody Allen, like you said, the guy, young guy is in the Woody Allen part, kind of. It seems like that. And Radio yeah. Days, I've never watched. How's there's one I didn't see. I like. Yeah, I do, I don't mind that one either. Uh, he wrote the screenplay. Good one-liners in it. Yeah. That's a good screenplay. <laughs> um. Um. John, who had the most women? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm trying. I don't know, man. Uh, you have to maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. That's tough. I mean, Mel Brooks, he's a great comic guy, but I don't know about the great, one of the best directors on Mount Rushmore. Um, and I'm not so sure that his movies, there's something about his comedies that seem a little too tame or something, like a, too cutesy or something. Although some of them are still potent, like like Blazing Saddles has stuff in there you can't do today. Do I get to say Rosemary's Baby even even though he didn't direct it, <laughs> or whose life is it anyway? Even though he didn't direct oh, it, he did he direct it. Wait a minute, influence. I don't know who directed Whose Life Is It Anyway. Hmm. Killing of a Chinese bookie, uh, and then I think the woman under influence uh, with his wife in there. 
and Peter uh, Peter Falk. Yeah. yeah, Broadway, Danny Rose. Yeah, that's, that's a fun movie. Yeah. And, you know, I never saw High Anxiety all the way through either. That's another one. Or Silent Movie yeah. I, have, I didn't see. Yeah, same here. I was just going to say High Anxiety and Silent Movie are two that I have i don't think I've ever seen any, any of it. Yeah, maybe comedy. I mean, if you, uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, uh, and the, the ones after, the ones after Spaceball, I mean, like the Dracula, Dead and Loving It, Robin Hood, Men in Tights, I haven't seen those either. Well, yeah, Dracula, Dead and Loving It, I know. It's not as good as Young Frankenstein, but it's it's okay. Yeah, in my opinion. This is from the guy that didn't like Seabiscuit, so you, gotta, you never know. Take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. Yes, Harvey Corman, I think, was funny. Boy, yes, I do. And especially with uh, Tim Conway, though. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if anybody has ever had a better one-two punch in a one-calendar year than, uh, than Mel Brooks did uh, with those two films. You know. Blazing Saddles and Young Frankenstein. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> In one year. Yep. I didn't see that. I've seen the original, to be or not to be, but not the remake. That is the question. To remake or not to remake? Mm. That should never be the question. <laughs> Yeah, I get mixed up with that. I don't know. Because people say, oh, your favorite, you think the greatest movie ever, ever made is Ben-Hur, and it's a remake. And I'm like, I don't go by the silent film, redoing a silent film. But that's just me. Yeah, well, I got to say, he, uh, yeah, but I, I, you know, I, like, I think Roger Corman was great. He made a lot of fun movies for cheap on a low budget, and, 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 and a lot of them are very good for what they are. I mean... But I couldn't put them on there. Yeah, if you were to say, okay, give me the Mount Rushmore directors who had a big impact with independent filmmaking. You know, you'd put him up there. You, you'd put Wa yeah. Roger Waters. Uh, or, I'm sorry, no, um, John Waters. Up John there, Waters. You know, John Waters, yeah. So, um, for sure. But, you know, not as an all-time great. Depends on, the, on the, the role, I think. I don't know, for me. He can be. How about that? He can be. He can be. Consistently a good actor? No. I guess it's also just uh, depends on the material as well, you know. When are you ever going to come up here, Mike? Check out this guy's channel. I keep telling everybody. Gray 1951 yeah. Media Channel. He wants to change it to Mike's Marquee. Because mm. <laughs> I'm not using Marquee anymore. Yeah, no, I like his uh, videos. I mean, watch his video, especially when he shows new thing that he's picked up. Speaking of which, we asked the question again about video ch uh, video channels and movie channels. Uh, about you? <laughs> well, again, all my films are in a, basically, you know, 99% of my films are in storage right now. So I, I'm kind of just not feeling inspired to do it right now because of the fact that, you know, in, in two and a half weeks, I'll be going, flying to Arizona and bringing my stuff here and putting them in another storage. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, I, I I would say yeah, I, it it'll happen again this year at some point. I will start making videos again. Um, I, I, by the way, Tarantino, I might put on on there as well. By the way, yeah. but although he steals it, I like Brian De Palma too, even though he also borrows, uh, <laughs> you know. I like the Palma, I like. I, like uh, I mean, if if uh, if Christopher Nolan keeps going the way he's going, you know, he could probably eventually be on that Mount Rushmore as well. Oh, I never talked about. I did a video of this already, but I never talked about some, what I watched. Oh, it's a little, yeah. It's I a little. It's a little hard. late for this, but uh, for those who haven't seen the video, I'm sure everybody has. This is a show that Rod Serling from Twilight Zone took part in um, after Twilight Zone, and it, and it's a classic. And for somebody who likes horror like me and supernatural stuff, you would think I might have seen this on TVs, all reruns and things for my whole life. But I never did. 
So I, I got this. It was cheap. It was like $15 on Amazon. Um, so I got it. The complete series on DVD. And here's an example where I'm watching them and I'm saying, looks all right to me. Like I might not even, we talked about that. I might not have to even upgrade it, but uh, if I like it. Right. But anyway, I watched the pilot. The pilot has three segments there. And uh, what the first one was the one I liked the best. It was directed by Boris Segal, who uh, also directed The Omega Man, which is like one of my favorite uh, cheesy 70s science oh. fiction movies. Yes. So are these hour long episodes? Well, I guess, how long was the first one, um, Ben? I don't see times on it. I guess it's like that. Yeah, something like that with the commercial. Well, not kind of commercial, yeah, short, you know, whatever. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, you know you first one, the pilot, uh, uh, yeah, the one called The Cemetery, and it had Roddy McDowell in it. And I, you know, I enjoy Roddy McDowell. You know, maybe Planet of the Apes guy, but I like him in Fright Night. I like him in anything that I see him in pretty much. Um, even in the Poseidon Adventure, I can watch him in anything. So he was really good as a very spoiled, nasty. A nephew of a old man who has a stroke and is, you know, he's, try, he's waiting for him to die and trying to speed that process up so he can get his money. You know, nothing, nothing really, uh, you know, original, so to speak. But I thought it was very well done, well directed too, and uh, I enjoyed that the best. It was kind of creepy. Then the second one was interesting because it's called Eyes, and I heard that Eyes is probably when I did some reading about this, the most popular night gallery because it has Joan Crawford in it, one of her last roles. And it also has a, the director yeah, you might have heard of before, Steven Spielberg. <laughs> and he and he was just starting out, I guess, in this. I think he was 23 or 4, something like that, 23. And I, and I read, did some more reading, and Joan Crawford didn't want him to direct because she wanted somebody more experienced. So he turned out to do a good job. Now, I, I think it was an interesting story. I didn't like it as much as the first one. Anyway, it has to do with a woman who's can't see. She's been blind since birth, and she wants to just have a surgery where she can see, even if it's only for, like, temporarily, for, like, 11 hours or something like that. So Tom Bosley, who plays uh, on Happy Days, is, is the sap that's going to donate his eyeballs or whatever. So he... Donates his eyes. She can Bad. see. And then I'm going to just say, that without going, I don't know. What, see, I'm, I'm getting like my writing style. It comes when yeah. I'm writing all these things. No, but, you know, he's happy to do it, by the way. But what's interesting is, and I'm going to put it this way without spoiling anything, even though you say, well, these things are this old. What's the difference? But let's just say things don't go out. She's able to see for a while. Like, like you know, it works. But I'm not going to tell you what happens, except to say, if you know the episode, Time Enough at Last. Uh, with uh, Twilight Zone, Burgess Meredith, um, it's kind of s similar to that. And the last story has to do with a, a a Nazi war criminal that's in hiding, and you know he's being chased all over the you know all over the world and everything, and he's trying to escape, and he wants to go into a painting, uh, if I remember right, because in all fairness, I I was getting a little like sleepy but i did see the whole thing but i wasn't registering as good as it should have it was okay and uh yes it's a, it's a, he wants to be a fisherman and get out of all this and try to hide into a painting that uh is of a man in a rowboat fishing that's basically the gist of that and that doesn't go out the way he planned it either at the end you know so i found them entertaining i like the first one the best but you know in future views if I get enough life left to watch these any more times in the next 10, 15, 20 years. We'll see what I think of it. So, uh, we'll go way back, right? right? Yeah, I did like, what the thing about Pulp Fiction is, I love that movie, but I loved, I felt so happy for Travolta at the time that he was back and he got, got a role because he was making some movies weren't too good and he was like was big again. second you know? comeback. Second comeback. You, yeah, what was the what was the other one with the first, the, the first comeback was Look Who's Talking. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, let's see. Let's give me a chance here. I'm just gonna go back a little bit. Um, the Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, smarter brother. Heard of it? I've I've never seen it. With Gene Wilder, sounds like a good concept. Yeah, I, I know of it. I mean, I think uh, Warner Brothers Archive has released that on Blu-ray. 
Wes, I thought you were going to ask me if I watched Secret of the Incas yet. <laughs> no. I mean, if I was to say the one that I've seen the most that I've watched over and over again, it would be Fargo. But I, I do really love Miller's Crossing and then obviously Big Lebowski, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou. Um, it was great. And at least I have a list of his movies. I, don't, I, haven't, I haven't seen those. But... Uh... Oh, I wouldn't see now. Doctor Shivago might be may be great, but you see, I, when I get, the feelings I get are nothing I want to see. I think, but yeah, it's it, it is great. Yeah, but it's not like Lawrence Olivier great. I mean, on Lawrence Olivier, Lawrence of Arabia great. It's not. Uh, I don't think it's Bridge on the River Kwai great. Um, but it, it's it's the lesser of the three, I think. But it it is good. It is good. How do you forget Scorsese? Mm. Would what you about put him on Scorsese, there? Oliver Grant? Uh, no. <sighs> on the mountain, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. But here's the thing: is just like you, you also when you when when you're putting somebody on on the Mount Rushmore, you're you're looking at impact, right? The okay, he's had a big impact. Um, you know, inspire. I mean, people have inspired. You know, he's inspired people to be directors, but. The one thing he doesn't have, like the the like the like the Spielbergs have, and and, and the Weilers or whatever, is 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 success, box office success. Uh, that's him. the one thing. I mean, so it was hit or miss. I mean, I mean, especially those '70s and '80s films, they did not make money. Um, he was not known as a box office director, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, more more artistic director. So his movies for the first couple decades did not make money. Well, that's one of the things I'm looking forward to is seeing a lot of guests, guest stars in these episodes and directors and things like that. Okay, I gotta get I gotta get these on so I can see all these as to over time. Coppola. Huh? Yeah. So yeah, 1974, The Conversation, Good Godfather Part Two. That's an, another uh, another example of having a great uh, one-two punch in one year. Um, both films were nominated for Best Picture, 1974, The Conversation in, in Godfather Part Two. I don't remember what my first episode was at Twilight Zone. I don't remember. Um, I don't. I think I remember at a young age seeing one, I don't know the name of it, where they're in a town and everybody's kind of frozen still. And, it's still, and maybe there's a farmer or somebody with like a pitchfork or a shovel just standing there or something. That's one that I seem to have a memory of. I don't know the name of that one, but that's another series. I've seen the first couple of seasons over and over and trying to get through the whole thing and never finish it. You know. The like button. Um, I'll have to let Tom answer this one. I haven't seen it since the 90s. I have to oh. go back and, and check it out. Oh, I think I know this movie. I think I just saw a little bit on Turner Classic Movies. It wasn't Bedazzled, was it? No? Or, or no, no, no. Oh, it's a guy's name. Jeez. Uh, it's a guy's name. Mm. It, it, or it might have been It or Arnold. How about Arnold? Is that it? Arnold. It might, that might be the name of it. There was a film called Arnold that didn't really work. <laughs> I saw him. I saw him. And first, he told me that didn't really work. Uh, mm. Yeah, there's a lot of movies like that. Uh, earlier movies than that too. Way earlier than that. Thirties. Uh, blowout. Yeah, blowout. I I like blowout. Brian De Palma film uh, with Travolta. Um, House on Haunted Hill, I love, because I saw that on TV, it's one of my childhood movies, you know, I revisit that every now and then. Now and then. Uh, no, I never saw that series, um, and Ghost Story, not for nothing, I'm not big on ghosts, I mean, eh, but still it could be good, just just the title, you know, just the title of a series. So you're not the biggest fan of ghost films? Not really. All right, so you haven't seen... Uh, Let's see. Uh, uh, the Others? 
I did see that. I, yeah, I can't remember yeah. it. I remember liking it, yeah. thinking it was pretty good. Yeah. But I, 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 I don't remember this particular sort in the movies. A lot of these movies, you, see, you know, you see them in the movies, and then that's why I was keeping notes. See, like that Sea Biscuit thing that I wrote. Like, if I was gonna do, like, okay, today I'll talk about Sea Biscuit. You know, I'd have to sit there and read it. Like, I did. It sounds like I'm reading somebody else's stuff. You right. know, like, I, I, I mean, I can't just. I'd have to do that. Uh, oh, yeah, here we go. We mentioned this, Tom, earlier. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, star. I mean, not star, but character actor of two hundred films. Two hundred films. He's one of those uh, actors where you, if you see him in a movie, oh, it's that guy, but you don't remember, you never remember his name. Yeah. Uh, but we, we were talking about that. I mean, he was in The Jerk. I mean, so many different Blood Simple, so many uh, great little uh, cameos or smaller parts in films. You recognize him. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. Brazil, you got to watch the, the director's cut. Uh, if you watch the, if you watch the edited bit, um, it, it's it's kind of like in a way it's kind of like Once Upon a Time in America. If you watch like, you know, the studio, you know, edit, uh, portion of it, I mean, it, it makes no sense. But I mean, you watch the edit. I mean, the the director's cut. Um, I, I think it's better, but I don't think it's one of Gilliam's best. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, it's a nice line. Oh yeah, I gotta be. I gotta be wide awake. Absolutely. I want to be. I, I'm looking forward to be able to say that Charlton Heston, you know, created Indiana Jones. I'm really. I'm really looking forward to being able to say that. Yeah, and Ghost. I was waiting for that too. You know, I saw Ghost Story in the movies back in the, 1981. Can't remember a damn thing. That's a lot of years ago. Front of stare, huh? Oh. Yeah, it's kind of funny. The front of stare being, you, you know, kind of an old man. Uh, documentaries. Yeah, I like documentaries. Uh, depending on what it's about. I, I I can't find the best one. I mean, you know, anything I like, if I see something, like I watched a documentary on the making of Ben Hur, for example. Okay, I love that movie. Uh, I don't know if I, I I bring that up so much. It's almost like Jaws or Rocky. Yeah, but. there's um there's a great one on Preston Sturgis on one of the uh, Preston Sturgis uh, films that Criterion released. Uh, I forgot which one it is, but. I think this Twilight Zone is the first episode. I think it's called Two. I think. Um, yeah, been through that one a long time, a lot of times, I should say. Oh yeah, and they have, and it has the doesn't it have the noise of Spot from the Monsters, the truck or something. It's a, no a roar or something. I thought. I'm thinking of the right movie. <clears throat> Yeah. There you go. I might watch that tonight. <laughs> uh, I didn't know at first that Ghostbusters was going to have uh, the original guys in it. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I've said before, you know, like, for example, I might see Beetlejuice too, too, or whatever, because still never seen the first one. That's right. And I think the act is still look good enough. So, yeah, I might they give just, that. They, a they... Yeah, they they today they released the first uh, image of Beetlejuice uh, for the new film. It looks all right. It looks all right. I think I'll go see it. I mean, I enjoyed the the first the original enough to maybe go see the, this this uh, part two. Well, let's still look at Winona Ryder, maybe. Well, it was um, but um, I I remember seeing that a long time ago. It's about the whole town stopped smoking, or something like that. I think it was smoking. Missed that one. Yeah. Uh, Sam Peckinpah, that's another name. But you see, that's another thing. Like, I've never watched Major Dundee. That's another Heston film. And I've never watched it because it's just, I'm like, I keep putting it off because I'm just, you know, certain topics don't interest me as much. But if I like the actor or the director, maybe. That's what happened when I watched uh, Paths of Glory one time when I was watching all different movies. Uh, I was getting a Kubrick kick and I liked it. You know, I might have to put Kubrick as the fourth uh, director on my, on my Mount Rushmore. Oh, yeah, Melvin Douglas. I know him from the 30s. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, there you go. 
Oh, come on. I still, I, how many times did I get this? Mr. Blanding's build his dream house. Wait, Douglas. wait a minute. Should I look that up, too? Because I know I saw that. I was disappointed yeah. with that, too. Man. Oh, really? Oh, great. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, I, but I wonder what I thought. That should be easier to find because there's not going to be this many reviews of that up. So I'm going to try to do that. I know he's really dying to, to, to hear there's my... There's some comedies, there's some comedies for, in my opinion, Oliver, like an airplane or a Borat that you can watch over and over and over again. Yeah. Cad Caddyshack, however, is not one of those, in my opinion. Now, I love Ronnie Dangerfield in, in, in Caddyshack. Um, however, I, I don't think it's uh, from, from start to finish... As, as strong as some of the other comedies of that uh, of that uh, time. Ah, uh, shit. Trina. Ah. Uh, sort by prolific writers. By, pro, pro, by prolific reviewer, what they mean is that have a lot of reviews. The most reviewers, reviews doesn't mean the best. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let me try to find I, this yeah. one. Yeah, Eric, I have the Phantom Carriage... Uh, Criterion released that uh, some time ago, and I enjoyed it. I mean, it was pretty. Uh, I mean, the, the effects, special effects, and that were, were were really good for for 1921. You know. Somebody wrote more depressing than funny. I don't know. I, what, um... I, Mr. Blandings. <laughs> oh really? I mean, I don't remember again. I don't remember what I thought. It's been a long time. Uh, come on, man! I can't be back. I'm back to 2000. Oh, I see. There it is. Two and a half, a little better. Oh wow! <laughs> out of four, or a six out of ten for me. And I wrote down Mr. Blanding's builds his dream house. This is shorter. I, the review is from 2008. See how long you know? Long time goes, man. Not a very funny comedy overall, though it has its scattered moments. Cary Grant wants to take himself and his family out of the quickly paced New York City and move to Connecticut where he'll have a larger house constructed to his specifications along with what he hopes is a better lifestyle. He finds out it's more problematic than he thought. Myrna Loy plays his wife but she, but she doesn't register anything here. <laughs> M Mel Melvin Douglas plays Grant's attorney and good friend who advises him against the whole undertaking. I don't know if it's just me, but Douglas reminded me a lot of the character he played in the old Dark House from 1932, especially while sitting in the backseat of Grant's car as a passenger, making quips while smoking a pipe. That's one of my little reviews, you know, I guess. I don't remember it, but it didn't do much for me, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah John Candy, what's not to like about him? Yeah, uh, listen, um, you know, SCTV, I love the stuff, I love what he did on there, uh, Splash, I loved him on Splash. Oh, yeah. He's got a great, he's got a great scene in JFK, uh, I think he's great in that. Uh, so he can do some dramatics as well, not just comedy, but, um. My favorite uh, movie yeah. by him is Only the Lonely, which is an mm -hmm. updated version of Marty, really. Oh, and I, so I think that's very good. Remake. Nah, it's not, he could have called it Marty, you know. But yeah. you know, Ali yeah, Sheedy. Trains and automobiles. There you go. Um, oh yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Hey, I laughed out. I don't laugh out loud very much, but I, when I see a movie. But I laughed in the theater when he was playing. He was like listening to the radio, driving the car at night on the car radio, and he's like playing the whatever he's doing. He's not paying it to, to the road or whatever. He's like playing the, the keyboards on the dash, whatever he was doing. Mess around. And this obviously the scene where he's got to eat the steak. Uh, and, yeah, that's uh, a, but that's another movie. Yeah. I hated that movie. I didn't yeah. find anything funny in that except for that scene. Well, he's yeah. got to eat, yeah. eat the steak. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, the gristle too. <laughs> yeah, he's going. What are you talking about, little grizzle there? Yeah. Yeah. All right, right. throwing a couple T-shirts and he'll finish it. <laughs> <laughs> that's. I remember he's going like. Yeah, yeah I know, right? <laughs> trying to eat it. Yeah, I remember that yeah. stuck out in my head. So many movies. That's like Doctor Detroit. Like I saw Doctor Detroit oh. once, and I was like in the movie Terrible. theater. I was very young. You know, I was a teenager or something, or twenty, twenty-one, and I was like yeah. falling asleep. We saw a midnight show or something. I was like 
Oh, this sucks, man. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Buck, I yeah, saw that. I mean, don't listen, remember. A lot of those SNL guys in the '80s just did some absolute shit. <sighs> Uh, Midnight. I saw Midnight Express uh, too. Yeah, I yeah I just watched it uh, a few months ago actually. Um, but, not for the first time, but rewatched it. I hadn't seen it in in, in some time, and uh, I think it's a really good film. I, I think it was worthy of all the Oscar nominations that it got. Well, I think that I'd have to I have to take my statement and take it back. I'm talking. I'm thinking a Midnight Run. Oh. <laughs> So I get it. Oh, Midnight I would Express. love to hear what you said about Midnight Run. Does that have it in there? I don't know if I have that one in there. Okay. Hmm. Uh, some of them we'll agree on. I never saw Being There. I should. Yeah, yeah. Being There is great. Uh, I think after this, I'm going to, when I get off, I'm going to take my temperature. Because I am, yeah, I'm kind of burning up too. I don't like this. A cough and a fever. I don't, if I have one, I don't like that. Uh oh. No. Well, but. Hopefully it's, uh, I mean, you're supposed to do a live stream in the morning, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> With that guy raising my blood pressure. Danny, I know you're watching. No, oh, he's not watching. He's in bed. Ah, uh, the Golden Maybe. Child. I did like the movie Coming to America. That I liked. But the Golden Child, I heard, sucked. That's what I heard. I think that's the movie that sucked. Yep. Yeah, you say it. Midnight Run is good. That is right. Yeah, don't have to yeah I saw, I saw hey, trading places, too. There's only two good things in trading places. Uh oh, some woman. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh. Ah. Oh. Drinking tons of water too. Yeah. What about De Niro and Pacino? What well, Pacino is, the, is better? De Niro. That's... De Niro is far superior. Nah, yeah. nah, he's overrated, especially yes. by Tom. No, 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 no. no. Pacino is overrated. De Niro. Oh, you know what it is? I don't think either one of them are all that. I just, I mean, in the sense that. Well, I, that's, I, a, that's a good question then. Let's go there. I mean, besides Heston, take Heston out. Well, he's also picture. kind of similar you know. to them. They might but, I mean, yeah. I'm not I mean, saying he's a great actor, Heston. Right, right. But, yeah. I mean, what is a, an actor that, I mean, you're going to try to make it a point to see all of his films? Um. Is there one? Pacino. Even though I've got a lot to go. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll try to think if there's another. Wow. Well, Boris Karloff, Bela Lugosi. But does that count? Well, okay. Stars. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Meryl Streep, as far as, you know, I, I still do the actress thing. Actress, you know, actor and actor. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will see almost anything with her in it. I've seen some things I never thought I'd watch because she's in it. Let's put it that way. But I still haven't been able to watch that, like, something like, what is that? Uh, House of the something or other? Or, uh, I, I don't know, something like that. I help, yeah. House of something with a bunch of women in it. And then I also went to the movies when I was, like, 23 to see Plenty. Oh, did that suck? Like, uh, I mean, I'm like, you know, but but I would see almost anything. Because she's a good actor, yeah. a great actress. The one, the one she did with uh, Goldie Hawn and um, the, the kind of like horror, somewhat horror film. What was it? Oh, uh, I love, that's one of my favorite movies that everybody hates or doesn't think much of. Uh, Death Becomes Her. Yes, Death Becomes Her. Thank you. I think that's a great black, dark comedy. And I think Bruce Willis is at his peak in that thing. I think mm -hmm. he really plays against type in there as a nerd, as a geek. In that movie, I think he does a great job in there. I forget who that director is again. I like him too. Um, usually, Zemeckis, maybe Robert Zemeckis. Is Robert, he Robert 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 Zemeckis? I think he might have directed that. Mm 
Well, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you and if you were an Eddie, I mean, something like that. I mean, I would say that was that would be for diehard Eddie Murphy fans, you know. Like for me, there's there's films that only, you know, that De Niro has done, especially over the last twenty years, that only diehard De Niro fans would watch. I don't know of any other ones, but you. That's the thing. Yeah, well. <laughs> I know he's. I know everybody. Yeah, we know he's well regarded. Yeah. I'm just saying. But um, Victor Mature. Well, first of all. Ah, uh, well, he's in the movie Head, you know, the monkey's head. Yeah, but that's, that's right. I know what movie Tom hasn't seen, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, Demetrius and the Gladiators. I'm guessing you haven't mm. seen that one. That's the sequel to The Robe. You know, I like him in okay. Samson and Delilah. I like him in The Robe. Mm. And I like the sequel, Demetrius and the Gladiators, sequel to The Robe. Um, mm. But those are the ones that he comes in my mind for. <sighs> Um, Beetle Eddie, I mean, Cagney is great, but he's an, I think he's an actor was typecast as a tough guy. So, we, you know, so you couldn't really necessarily go out of that. I mean, yeah, he did the, the musicals like Yankee Doodle Dandy. Yeah, Yankee all, Doodle but, Dandy. It didn't work you know, for yeah. me with him. I don't know why. Yeah. Gangster. But, I, think it, I mean, yeah. Um, I, I like him in, uh, you ever see Man of a Thousand Faces? No, it's no. The Lon Chaney no, Senior no. story. Right. That's right. what that's worth that's worth seeing, I think. I mean that's a but again, there's a lot of liberties, a lot of falsehoods in that, but still it's an entertaining movie. Mm-hmm. I could definitely hear like when I breathe in like like there's all kinds of gurgling going on in here, so I don't mm-hmm. know. Everybody's interested in that. Yeah. But like Angels with Dirty Faces and, and White Heat like James is saying. Well that's what yeah, public enemy. Yeah. Public enemy. That's put that grapefruit in the face. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. I mean, still, a lot of times when I watch Karloff, I, you know, but he's an older style actor. You watch these guys; they seem like they're acting. You know, kind of. Sometimes he goes really over the top, Karloff. But he's another one I can watch at almost anything. Uh, Chris Pratt. William Henry Pratt. I don't know. <laughs> you tell you talking about William Henry Pratt. Oh man. The only other Pratt I know is Chris Pratt, so with the uh, Gar- Guardians of the Galaxy films. Yeah, I don't know why White Heat doesn't doesn't thrill me as much as some of the earlier Cagney gangster films. I don't know why. Maybe he's a little older. It's a mama's boy. Oh, another, yeah. another film that was announced today with that uh, Warner Archives Blu-ray uh, for April was uh, uh, Coppola's The Rain People uh, oh. with uh, James Caan and Robert Duvall. In that. I've never seen it. I've, I've always wanted to see that. So I'm kind of um, excited to, uh, to pick it up when it comes out. Yeah, that was right. William Henry Pratt. That's mm-hmm. Boris Karloff's real name. Go. Oh man! Oh, well, you know go. your Karl- Karloff trivia, there, Joe. I sure do. That's why if I just make my channel a uh, horror and science fiction yeah. only, I would yeah, I would stand a lot more of these uh, assaults. Yeah. Man. Yeah, that's a line from uh, Little Rascals. Only the last word is stymie. My choke, <laughs> uh, it's an artichoke. And he never had one, and stymie says, May choke arty, but it ain't gonna choke stymie. And he won't eat it. Ray Milan, oh, I don't know about that. Another booze bucked actor. Booze bucked <laughs> Collected some booze bucks. <laughs> well, you, I was you, you lump you lump him in in in, one, in the, the that group of actors, great actors from 30s and 40s and into the 50s that ended up having to, unfortunately, just do really bad you know B films. Yeah, the Basil world. Rathbone, Hillbillies in a Haunted House. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I thought about this, but I probably would do that for horror actor uh, directors, maybe. But you know. That cough. Mm. 
Man, I can't get anything out. Mm. Ain't got no brakes. It's freewheeling. We got to get Tom on these things. We got to get Tom on this, a lot of these things that he's, he's resisting, like the yeah. honeymooners and uh, okay. Little Rascals. Yeah. I know we talked about it before, about the uh, the, uh, the film where they, they they make the car and they're going down the hill. That's the one. Um, yeah. yeah. Freewheeling. Yeah, freewheeling. Yeah, that I remember that being a lot of fun. Oh, it, it is. Yeah. It's funny. Fun and funny. Um... The X, the man with the X-ray eyes. That's another Ray Milan booze bucks movie. It was the two heads one. Oh yeah, that's really a booze boxer. A booze boxer. I didn't even invent that. Somebody knew it. My friend, ex friend of mine, I guess you could call him. Booze oh bucks. my god. I would I like, like to do a film like that. Hey, but you know what? I mean, even though we left, that's what these people are remembered for in some cases. I, I know, I know, I hear you. You know, like nobody, a lot of people wouldn't know his other stuff. Or The Lost Weekend. You know, there's an early Charlie Chan movie that uh, Ray Milland is into. I think he calls himself Raymond Milland. And it, Daniel Day Lewis could be a good answer for Joe's question. I forgot the, I forgot the question. Like Daniel Day Lewis is great. You know. I don't have an answer to this. Tom can't answer this either. I mean, not with uh, the stuff there. Listen, I I used to have, I mean, seasons and seasons of of South Park, seasons and seasons of The Simpsons, uh, seasons and seasons of all so many different shows uh, on DVD. But um, um, now, when it comes to buying TV on, on Blu-ray, I, I'm really, really, um, I really, just, uh, I have to absolutely adore the, the show in order to uh, spend all that money on it. Um, yeah. Selective is the word I was looking for. Well, I don't have it. Well, I have, first of all, I have a DVD that's pretty good as it is. Um, I forget what it's called, Essential Laurel and Hardy, something like that. And then there's another one, they put a Blu-ray out, that's supposed to look amazing. But the thing is, it's not every episode, it's not every short. And that bothers me when they do that, you know, they just pick certain ones. And is there going to be a volume two or not? They just take, like, certain select ones, they don't put them in order or anything. I don't like when they do that. Paper Moon's okay. Um... I don't mind Paper Moon. Uh, actually, the, the the I think the film he did after that, Daisy with Sybil Shepherd, I just got announced for Blu-ray, and I haven't seen that, so I, I kind of want to see that one. Yeah, Spanky was really a regular riot. I gotta say that. Wow. Um, yeah, Wild Poses is a great one. Any any of those. I don't think Spanky was that old. Oh, oh, you were eight years old. Yeah, you were eight years old, right? And that's a sequel. That's a sequel to an. Uh, I gotta try to remember. I try to remember the names of these shorts and episode things wherever I can. Oh, geez, it's a sequel. Um, Bedtime worries. It's a, it, the first one is Spanky can't sleep on his own. He's, his parents want him to sleep, learn to sleep in his bed by himself mm -hmm. instead of sleeping with them, and all the craziness that happens with overnight. It's hilarious. And then the sequel, it was so good, they brought back the husband and wife couple to play the parents again in wild poses. When they wanted to get a family portrait. And he takes Spanky, he's very, doesn't want his picture taken. Especially when he overhears the photographer say, you know, I had a boy in there before. I had to shoot him nine times. And she's like, did he shoot you? <laughs> he thinks he's going to get shot, you know. And, From what uh, I do remember, I love Spanky. The, the younger Spanky, I thought, was better than, like, the older. Oh, yeah. Well, you, you could stay away from the MGMs oh. altogether. Yeah. I, my opinion. With, with Froggy and all those guys. But, I mean, the diehards might want to watch a whole different flavor of those. But, yeah, but they did get older. They went to 1938. Right. So, I mean, I forget how old they were. I don't know how old Spanky was then. I don't know, nine, ten, they're getting, they're getting older, you know. Yeah, Laurel and Hardy have a cameo, yeah. They were making the movie Bratz at the time. 
So they're on the sound stage. And, you know, Spanky picked up a lot of facial expressions and things from Oliver Hardy. He's got that slow burn thing when he's annoyed at Alfalfa or something. He goes, <laughs> like, I give Danny that look every morning. Yeah. Ah. You know? Yeah, this is the one. Thank you, Eric. Laurel and Hardy, definitive restorations. Uh, oh, wait a second. You said features all the films that UCLA had restored. <coughs> so, I, it's not all of them, though, right? It's not literally all all of their sound talkies, they call them talkies. Um, oh, I know I have one. I just have to look at his, the list of his filmography again. Uh, sorry, my error, Eric. Uh, Bratz was in 1930, while Poses was 33. But what was the movie they were doing there? Because they had the set with the, those little kids and they had giant chairs and all that. Uh, Robert McGowan. I don't remember when he left. The director. Uh, Leave it to Beaver. Yes. Dennis the Menace. Yeah, Mr. Red. I like all those shows, but only the monsters out of all of them I'm familiar with every episode. The other ones, like, I, you know, I could get Leave it to Beaver. I mean, I could. I, when I was in the hospital, I was in the hospital. A year and, and a half ago, and that's one of the things I watched every morning was Leave It to Beaver, and they were pretty funny, and I liked the whole feeling remember, of it. Those old days, I like that. Yeah, I remember watching the when when they brought Leave It to Beaver back. I remember watching that every week. Yeah. When the, when the, you know the reboot of uh, Leave It to Beaver. Yeah. Oh oh the reboot. Yeah, when they when they brought everybody back in the eighties. Oh okay. Uh, yeah, I've seen the Ag Agony and the Ecstasy. Yeah, it's not one of my favorite Charlton Heston movies, you know, but uh, but it's good. There's other ones too, like there's one called Khartoum. You know, I don't really, I just, you know, <laughs> I don't know what it is, like foreign stuff. Or I'm just not interested in Midway. I don't really care about, you know. Oh, you haven't seen Midway? Well, the Heston one anyway. Uh, Terry yeah. Fonda is in it, and I forget who else is in it. There's other big names in it. Um. Ah, uh, still the beaver. Have you seen touch? Have you seen touch the touch? Oh the yeah, I'm sure. I know you have. <laughs> well, that's a good. That's I think that's pretty good, overall. Um, it's fantastic, Orson Welles film. Yeah, it's it's very you know he's just, he plays a real rat bastard in that. <clears throat> Some people don't expect or don't accept. Heston as, as a Mexican in there, but I do, I guess, because I keep saying Mexican-American, maybe, like, you know, uh, not, you know, he has, he sounds like, uh, you know, maybe born here, I don't know if he was in the movie, I gotta watch it again, oh, I, I like it, but it ain't the best to me. Well, you know, Ben Hur's the best to you, but I, I well, Planet what, of the man, Apes, <laughs> yeah, so, True, yeah. No, Ben Hur is I, definitely I, for, for me. I yeah, I could put Touch of Evil in my top two for for Heston films, absolutely. Hmm. What else would you put up there that you know of? Well, I mean, obviously the original Planet of the Apes, Ben Hur, um, Big Country. Um, oh yeah, yeah he's yeah. got a kind of small role in there, but he's good. It's, he's, he yeah, plays a good villain good. in there. Yeah. And him and Gregory Peck are really good. But that's, again, William Wyler. And yeah. real, he always talked about, like, he, what, what, what I like about it is how hard that he made them work to get a scene right. Like, they were beating mm -hmm. each other up like, all night and everything to get, to get this that scene when they're fist fighting yeah. to get it right. And Burl Ives is good in there. I like Burl Ives in that movie. Mm -hmm. It's a good movie. I mean, uh, the Omega Man's good too, but I don't know if I'd put it up there. Uh, and and obviously, Soylent Green. I mean, I mean, those yeah. are probably round up a top ten. You know? Well, for me, you know, it's all it's all admittedly nostalgia for me. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I mean, you know, Omega Man is a lot of people you could criticize about it, but boy, that just hit that just hit the right nerve when I was like nine. You know, and the music, every the soundtrack, everything. That's my most wanted movie to see on a big screen again. 
And uh, I don't know what it would take to ever put that out unless they, they did it to capitalize on, uh, you know, the new, they're going to do another Will Smith, I Am a Legend. And, I, you know, but we'll see. Um, Yeah, I know he was in that. I don't think I saw. I also didn't see the three Musketeers and the four Musketeers, and he's in that. Mm. But then later on, he gets, like, small roles. Like, in Tombstone, he's got a small role. Right, right. He's got a small, small role in um, Kenneth Branagh's Hamlet as well. You see, that's another thing. He directed yeah. and starred in Anthony and Cleopatra, and I think it's 1970 or something. And I just, just you know, I like, well, I like some of these historical, biblical-type films. But I don't know if I could get into that one. You know, mm-hmm. but I, got, I should try to watch them, but... Yeah. I like oh, oh, very good. <laughs> that's good. Oh, that's fun, Drek. Oh, that's fun, Drek. Oh, I'll, I'll take that every day of the week. That is funny, that movie. I can't say too many of the lines from it, but. Why is this some kind of a joke? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my girlfriend was talking about that, trying to rent like a theater or something. But yeah, you I can do it. I think you have to get some kind of rights though from the studio to show a certain movie for my money. I don't think you can, you know, home theater viewing only. Uh, you know, home viewing. Not out in the theater, but I, I don't know. They always got to get, they always got to get the rights to show movies permission. As far as I know, the head with two things, very nice. It's definitely well. If it's any classic, it's a cult classic. Is that all? You, I can't. I can't say what it was. Is that all you people ever think about? It's great. You, you know, for those who don't know. Booze Bucks, Ray Milan is, is desperate to get some money and for booze, so he makes a movie where he's a dying old doctor, and they've mastered like putting you know tra- doing a head a transplant. But he the only way to save his life at the end is to put his head on somebody's body to save his life, and the only one they have is Rosie Greer, the big African American football player. But the thing is. Um, he's the character of Ray Milan is a raging bigot. So he just he wakes up and he's laying on the table and Rosie Greer's there, and he's like, "I can move my arm, I can feel it, I'm moving it, I'm moving it." He's laying on the thing and you see Rosie Greer like, he's, like he's, uh-huh. lift, he's lifting his hand up and it's a black hand, and he goes, "What is this? Some kind of a joke?" He's like that. There's other lines too that I can't say. They're like typical stereotype lines. You know, is that all you? I'll say people. Is that all you people ever think about? Like he he goes to visit his girlfriend Rosie Greer, and he got the head on it, and they're talking about like you know going to bed tonight or something like that. And he goes, is "That all you people ever think about?" Like he's a real freaking bigot. Now why am I laughing? Because it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And there's some shots where they ride on a motorcycle. And it's like a it's kind of phony head. Like it's not really a real head. It's like yeah. obviously strapped on. It's bouncing around right. and everything. Bouncing around. It's hilarious to me that stuff. It's the stuff I like. It's so bad. That's for. Oh well, King Creole easy. You know, for me, I still say and even if people don't like Elvis much or Elvis movies, I think King Creole you should see. Uh, no, I don't agree that that's it. No, I don't agree. But it depends how far you want to go. I like some of the some of the cheesy beach blanket bingo movies. So, but those two, at least see those if nothing else. And loving you is not bad. Got a cough. Uh, folks, if I'm here in the morning, I'll do a stream. Alvin, I don't understand what you're trying to say. I just go to serve for you. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I didn't send the survey. What? No, I didn't send any. Thank you. I don't know what that is. 
the head of Archie Bunker on James Brown's shoulder. Yeah, Flaming Star is pretty good, but that's his. People don't like that. I remember McCartney saying he he saw that one. He didn't like it because he didn't sing in it. So, uh, not of this earth. Uh, is that the one with the, the guy with the eyes? Tell me if that's the one with the guy with the weird eyes. Uh, I think it is. Oh, man. Charo. Yeah, I haven't seen that in a long time. I'm still supposed to get through all the Elvis movies. I've seen it, but it's not one of my favorites. It's Elvis Goes West. I like the song, Charo. Oh, jeez. Yeah, well, I watched many Tracy Lords movies back in the day, but then later, <laughs> but then later, I you know I found out other stuff. But I was a kid myself, so it's all right. Yep. Besides, I like I like like in their forties, fifties, and sixties. That's what I like. You heard me. <laughs> Yeah, that's weird. That's the weirdest thing. Charo. Wow. Tom says, wow. wow. I just got it on my regular screen. Um. <laughs> they haven't looked, they haven't pursued it, perused it. Uh, maybe it's time to cut this shorter. Well, we only got a little bit of time left. Thank you. Thank you, Matchstick Man. Well, I'm dying here. I have a cold. I have a bad throat. I'm coughing. I dying. You know, and it's... Shouldn't be doing these things, really. Ooh. Um, yeah, I think so. No, no. No? Yeah, I think no, so. No, not at all. You had some of the worst musicals of all time. Musicals? Uh, big budgets. Big budget films that flopped. Uh, just, uh... A terrible, awkward. Good science fiction and horror films, bud, buddy. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah, I got all the Charlie Chan movies. I mean, yeah, I could talk about those. So I talk about Charlie Chan movies. I got all of them. I watched some of them. Yeah, despite the hurdles. By the way, I, you know, I was going to think of Roman Polanski up there, but I haven't seen Chinatown. What? You haven't seen Chinatown? That's right. I have. What? Who cares? Yeah. But I've <laughs> Chinatown. But I like uh, Rosemary's Baby. Is it is it right to put him as a great director for one movie? <laughs> That's no, one well, of the best I mean, directed movies ever. Uh, Knife and Water is fantastic as well. It's, it's one of his um, earlier films, foreign language films. Um, and then what about what that that vampire? film what was it called joe his uh, vampire film? oh uh, uh fearless yeah. vampire killers vampire yeah yeah i didn't think that was all that great no yeah he did something else did he do something with johnny depp later or something ninth gate was it something like that yeah ninth but... gate uh frantic with harrison ford yeah 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 i got lucky Um, I've seen all the Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing movies, except that one. <laughs> yeah, make it a while, because i got to get myself healthier. <laughs> yeah. Four walls. Nah, we're kicked yeah. off that show. They don't we'll, care no more. No, stop it. We'll get back to that. We'll get back. Look at man, it's a lot to do. look. I, you know, I do two shows as well. I mean, I work full time. You know, Joe does a lot of things. I mean, Joe's got to be live twenty four hours a day. You know, and uh, you know, I mean. Why are you telling me this? <laughs> He's not doing that as much anymore. I'm getting disappointed. You know, you're you're really rude. You know that, Joe. You're really rude. 
you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, don't ask Tom this. Uh, Marx Brothers taking the train apart and burning it when they were... I don't remember it. I don't know which one that is. Mm. We talked about Ringo Starr movies last time, I'm pretty sure. You yeah. know? I don't know. Maybe we're gonna, one here. We're gonna but, give we're gonna give that a break. Yeah, give it a break. Sorry about that, Joe. But we, I mean, we've talked. We've talked I'll like say that'll be the on. that'll be the day in Caveman. All good to yeah, watch. Yeah, I mean that's it. You know, that's 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 it right there. Some people don't like uh, eucalyptus and mint tea. What's what if it's the dreaded COVID? And don't tell me Paxlovid, because I'm taking something else that you can't take Paxlovid with. Ooh. Um, wonderful world we live in in this 21st century. <laughs> zing, zing. Oh. That is a riot when he goes on about that stuff. Uh, then he denies it later. Yeah. I don't care what you spend your money. I love when they do that. I don't care what you spend your money on. You can buy whatever you want for all I care. Yeah. I haven't seen Lily Gish in Way Out West. So many movies, so little time. So many records, so little time. That's right. So many books, so little interest. <laughs> I don't know, man. Got to get this stuff on. By the way, watch any more Odd Couple or we cover that? Uh, what, I'm done with the first disc of season four. So I got to get to... Uh, maybe I'll watch a little few more tonight. Yeah, it doesn't tell me much. I can't remember what's on the disc. But anyway, I think we talked about some of them. Yeah, Butch Cassidy, Sundance Kid, the greatest movies ever made in my book. Lawrence of Arabia, they say it's the greatest. I don't have no interest in it. 2001, eh, it's an effects treat. Psycho, Dr. Strangelove. I saw Dr. Strangelove as well when I was doing my Kubrick craze. Yeah, but but what's what did all those com what did all those films have in common? I mean, the most of the most fact those a lot of those came at towards the at the beginning and towards the end of the decade. You know, in the middle, uh, I think there was some really Duds uh, there. Yeah, helping a hard day's night. Come on, man. That's the beginning of the thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you had yeah. Die Monster yeah, Die yeah. with Karloff. You yeah, there you go. Yeah. You had Godzilla <laughs> versus, versus Monster Zero. Come on, man. Yes. As of right now, yes. Well, yeah, so me too, if you, if, if you care. Um. <laughs> Love is that it. The, love is, it, the, is this it. the one when Andy Griffith is a, is a racist? Yeah. I've seen that. Well, I don't know about racist, but I mean, just a loud. Pre mouth, is a preacher? You know? What is he? A preacher or something? No, he's remember. not a preacher either. I can't. Yeah. No, he's just. No, he just plays somebody that has is very vocal, has some very strong opinions, becomes a becomes very popular, and uh, just uses uses and abuses people. He gets caught. Um, he gets caught on air, you know, the, there's a commercial break and he gets caught on air saying things, inappropriate things that turn Whoa. people, there, that turn everybody off on him. Whoa. Well, I think I'm going to end this stream because it's just about 90 minutes. Might want to say a couple of words to Tom after, even though he's like, oh, leave me alone. But, um... Yeah, this is not one of my favorite episodes either. Victor Bono is the spiritualist who comes to exercise Felix and Oscar's air conditioner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, thanks everybody for joining in with this. Thank we you. did it again. Yeah. Thank you. And Tom, of course, was perfect as always on here. And uh, we'll do it again. Oh, I forgot to put the, the, the thing on. Okay. Uh, we will do that next time. All right, so I'll talk to you all later. Take care. See so long, folks.